another round of empties today. I'm going to try not to talk too much because I feel like the last empties video was super long, but these are always fun for me to film. And as I mentioned, pretty much in every one of my empties videos, I'm going through quite a lot of product lately because I'm trying to finish everything that I'd already sort of half opened. So I think things are starting to slow down. I don't think there'll be that many like frequent empties videos coming coming up. But while I have them, I figured I'd talk about them because I have a full box basically waiting to run through before I recycle. And as always, let me know if you have any questions about any of the products shown. Oh, and one last thing, um, a lot of the products that I go through when I empty them, they, it kind of means that I've liked it enough to finish it. I'm pretty like quick to declutter. So there might not be that many like negative comments thrown in through this video, but we'll see. I'm sure there are some critiques that I can give. Um, I just always try to give like balanced feedback really, because I think a lot of products are good. Not sure there are that many products that are great, but let's see how we go. I'll actually start with a product that was only like lukewarm. It's the Necessaire Scalp Serum. Um, this is another product that was like fine. I did finish it. It was nicely hydrating, but ultimately I didn't feel Feel like it did anything so beyond my scalp feeling comfortable for like the first half an hour it was like it dissipated straight after that so I'm not sure if this would have any long-term effects if I would keep using it but it's just ultimately too expensive to keep in rotation considering I didn't really notice anything from finishing one full-size bottle next is an all-time favorite like forever favorite cult favorite like soulmate product lotion p50 from biologique recherche so this product is basically an exfoliating acid that i would use in a toner step and it has gluconolactone lactic acid niacinamide a bunch of purifying extracts just ticks all of the boxes for what i would want in an exfoliating product but as I've said a million times before, the reason I love P50 is not because it exfoliates, it's also adding like nutrition or replenishing my skin while it's exfoliating. So I really feel like this does a lot to strengthen my skin barrier while it's um, disrupting it a little bit, I guess. So disrupting is the wrong word. It's just kind of like exfoliating, encouraging cell turnover, but it's not doing it in a way that's like killing my skin at the same time. Next is another empty of the Everyday Mineral Mousse which is my favorite sunscreen. Um, I've spoken about it a lot. Basically, it has a whipped mousse-like texture, hence the name. It kind of acts like a primer on the skin, has a bit of a skin blurring effect because it does have translucent tints in it um, and just makes my skin look smooth while I'm wearing it, which is always a great um, positive of any sunscreen. It is mostly mineral, so again, I'm not sure how this would go across skin tones, but hopefully the tint will, would reduce the cast a little bit. I just love it. Like it really really has a matte leaning finish. Once I put powder on top, it stays matte all day. So no complaints, I've already got three backups of this and I can't see myself swaying away from it anytime soon. Next is Prequel Glenzer, which um, I feel like has taken social media by storm a little bit and very well deserved, like Prequel is a great great brand. Dr. Sam Ellis, who is behind the products and the face of the brand, I think she's one of the best social media derms, just very thoughtful and actually cares about the information she puts out. Um, and you can tell in the products, they're not gimmicky. They use a lot of like true derm ingredients and the price point is affordable. I think now it's launched in Target in, in the US and that's the kind of thing I want to see from Derms. I don't need doctors selling products that are $400, like that's insulting. If you're a doctor, you're supposed to care about the public and care about the health of skin. And that's really why I think Prequel has nailed it. Like they know who they are and where they should be in the market. Nothing drives me crazy than doctors, especially plastic surgeons who are literally ridiculous with their price points. Anyway, I'm ranting now about doctors in social media, which is probably a whole other video, but Dr. Sam is a good one. Prequel is awesome. Glenzo, which I haven't even spoken about. Um, I actually prefer it as a body wash because it has quite a loose, stringy, um, really hydrating texture with a really like fluffy kind of enveloping lather. Um, for me, that feels a little bit out of control on the face, easier or at least maneuver it where I want it to go kind of thing. Whereas Glenza just like glides for days. So it just like takes over my whole face. Um, I have absolutely used it on my face in the shower and I would absolutely use it as a face cleanser for my face because it's a really nice and hydrating formula. 
it's just more like a textural preference where I think it sits more in the body category for me personally. If you can't tell, I haven't written down any notes. So I'm just going through these products the way they come to mind in the moment right now. So um, forgive me if this is sounding a little bit random because I don't actually know what I'm going to say. It's just whatever pops into my head, which is probably making for a really useless video. And again, let me know in the comments if you have any questions because I probably actually haven't addressed anything. Next is the Shantakai um, orange flower water, which is basically orange scented water in a can. I literally have no idea why I bought this. Um, actually, well, I do. I bought it because of the can. I really like this idea of like an aluminium colored in this color. I thought it would look like pretty <laughs> on my shelves, but ultimately this was incredibly useless. It didn't really feel particularly hydrating. I didn't feel like it did anything. I would often spray it. I would often spray it on my skin just before doing a cleanse with a fragrance free cleanser, just to give a little bit of aroma in the air. And I guess that's how I ended up using it more as a room air freshener. But the scent itself was also quite bitter, so it wasn't like my favorite smell anyway. So I definitely wouldn't repurchase this. I'm pretty sure it's been discontinued anyway, so, so that is a pointless comment. Next is the Cray Beauty Makeup Rewind, and one of my favorite, like all-time favorite first cleanse products at night. They call it a transforming jelly oil cleanser, and I very much agree, because it does feel kind of like a gel, but also like an oil. I love the subtle sort of grapevine scent this has. I think it emulsifies really well it makes my skin feel clean and nourished without any like icky noticeable oil residue so very much a big fan of this I'm probably leaning toward cream cleansers more so lately but I definitely feel like I will repurchase this because it's one of the few oil cleansers that I think is actually really really good next is Necessaire the body lotion so this was a surprise hit like I used to prejudge Necessaire a little bit because they seem like a fairly basic brand but the price points are a little bit higher so I didn't really understand why you would buy this versus like a CeraVe or, an, or a Naturium or something like that for body especially, but they actually know textures really well and I'm incredibly like, I was incredibly shocked in a good way as to how refined and just beautifully luxurious this body lotion felt. It has a kind of buttery feel to it without feeling sticky or tacky and just feels like it's actually coating the skin, but in a really pleasant way. Um, so yeah, I think they've done an excellent job with this body lotion. And although yes, it's basic, um, I actually think it's one that I will probably repurchase at some point. I've got like five or six body lotions from other brands to get through at the moment. So it probably won't rebuy it immediately, but definitely on my list of this impressed me. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it and I would happily use it again. Next is the Jasmine and Lily Healing Mask from Shantakai. I think one of Shantakai's better products, this has a really nice soothing effect on the skin. It just feels really creamy, almost like applying a sunscreen oddly. It just feels really creamy and it has a pleasant like rose scent. Um, I would use it as like an SOS mask. In the end, I've actually preferred using the Augustinus Barda Cream Mask. Um, that just works a little bit better for me taking heat out of my skin. So I very much enjoyed using this. I might repurchase it at some point. I think if you carry a lot of redness and you need sort of soothing extracts and that sort of thing, it's definitely the type of mask to consider. Yeah, it's just probably one that I don't need to reach for regularly. It took me a while to go through this jar. So that's probably a sign that I wasn't necessarily reaching for it consistently, but good product, just um, not a huge favorite. Next is the Velvet Sleeping Mask from Sisley. Um, this was just okay. Um, I bought this, I bought this to kind of use as an overnight rich cream essentially, because the instructions say that you leave it on for 10 minutes and then kind of massage in the excess. So it's basically a glorified moisturizer. Um, I, I didn't really feel this was particularly special. I very much prefer the Black Rose Mask from the Sicily line. So that one I already just repurchased instead of buying this. So the Velvet Sleeping Mask is maybe a little bit more appropriate for like dry skin types because this does feel a little bit more nourishing and buttery than the Black Rose. But I actually find the Black Rose to be more hydrating. So I still consider that to be a better like universal or overall face mask. So yeah, this was just fine. I definitely don't think it's anywhere near like being worth its price. Next is Phytosurgeon's Verdant Force Field, which is a flagship moisturizer for Phytosurgeons as a brand. 
They're just a small indie brand out of Canada and a little bit more focused on makeup, but they have a really nice skincare line as well. This is very much focused on green tea. It's green, it smells like matcha green tea in a way. So I enjoy using this from a sensorial perspective. The texture is quite light. It's almost like a gel cream, um, but has a, a richness to it or a nourishment emollients to it. So it makes my skin feel quite glowy and dewy. For that reason, I can't really use this on a day-to-day -day basis because I prefer more the matte life. Um, but I would use this regularly on like my days off work where I don't mind looking a little bit shinier. Um, and I just really enjoy the texture. It has a nice skin soothing, calming effect. Um, and yeah, it's just a really nice product. Uh, plus it's 80 mil, so it ends up being really good value, quite a bit larger than the standard average moisturizer. Drinking a coffee while I'm filming this, so if I have like a milk mustache developing, you'll have to excuse me. <laughs> Next is the Naturium Salicylic Acid 2%, which is a beautiful, beautiful salicylic acid serum. Um, it has a much more watery texture than a lot of them that feel very oily. Um, I love this product and I would happily keep using it. It's just because I rely so much on lotion P50 for exfoliating, using 2% salicylic acid too regularly gets a little bit intense on my skin. So sadly, this just doesn't really have too much of a place in my routine. Instead, I use the Build Skincare A Gel, which is 1% salicylic, and that has more of like a cushiony gel texture that also softens the blow of the salicylic acid on my skin. So yeah, this is a great product, would very much recommend it if you are more acne prone and maybe you're not using other stronger acids because um, I think they've done a great job with the texture and like the application of it and everything. It's just, yeah, personally no real room for it in my routine anymore. Now I did also finish a bottle of the plated Exosomes Intense Serum. I won't talk about that now because I think this deserves a full video on Exosomes. So stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to mention I've gone through this and I'm using one of their other products at the moment as well. So yeah, I'll go through that in more detail later. Next is a mini of the Isoplacenta from Biology Recherche, which is in effect a hydrating serum. Um, I didn't really notice very much using this product. Um, they have other products that I prefer. There's another hydrating serum tissue layers or something like that I'll throw up on screen that I like so much more that I find much more hydrating. So yeah, although I only had a mini, I might have needed a bigger size to notice more of a skin effect because I think it's supposed to help with like, because I think it's supposed to help with acne marks and that sort of thing, but I didn't really notice much happening. And I know there's some controversy with Biologie because um, they've kind of reformulated more using vegan ingredients. So that's maybe made their products a little bit more simplified. So yeah, I'm not sure their price point really aligns with the ingredient blend that they have now, but there are certainly still some biologic products that I think are excellent. This one just didn't blow me away in the, in the chance that I had to use this. Next is Prep Step from GoTo, which is also another like hydrating water. This was definitely more hydrating than something like the Shantakai flower water, but Again, I didn't really notice too much with this. Generally, if I'm using like a watery spray like this, I love the Caudalie, not the Elixir, just their regular water in the can. For some reason, I find that to be super hydrating and really soothing. So this was okay. I finished it. It was, you know, fine. I would not repurchase it myself. The scent is a little bit too botanical. Unless you're a go-to fan, I didn't really notice anything spectacular using this mist, but ultimately they call it prep step. It's supposed to be a toner, maybe to use under a mask or something just to boost some of the hydrating properties. So it's probably unfair to make the, it's probably unfair to have super high expectations of it because um, it's a totally fine product. It's just going to be more whether you enjoy the scent. Or Next is the 111 Skin Anti-Blemish Booster, which I absolutely love. This was one of my all-time favorite anti-acne products, just in a very gentle vehicle. And it has a really nice gel serum texture that feels quite plumping on the skin, um, which is kind of unusual for acne treatments that tend to feel quite drying. Um, so I think they designed that really well and it helped a lot with redness and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and all the things. So one of my favorite products. The only thing is I think they might have reformulated this. So I bought the new version, which I haven't opened yet because I'm not breaking out at the moment or not breaking out intensely at the moment. So I'll open that soon and I might have to report back because um, I love the original 
and all. I'm just not sure if the update will be as good. I really hate it when brands reformulate sort of key products like this because it was just so good and now I'm worried they've like watered it down or made it like every other product on the market. So yeah, that's a bit, but we'll see and I will let you know. Next up, I finished a mini of the Le Dermo S from Biologique Recherche. This was a really nice, pleasant cream cleanser, more targeting delicate skin types or sensitive skin types. Um, I enjoyed using this. It's just they have a cleanser called Le VIP 2 that's in a similar lane, and I prefer that like much, much more. So I would have personally rebuy this. I would go for the Le VIP 2 instead. But if you know you have delicate skin, very much worth exploring. I think this is a good cleanser. Next up is the Naturium Multipeptide Moisturizer, which I've spoken about quite a lot recently. I just can consider it an awesome like one and done universal type moisturizer that has a super neutral finish. So it's not glossy, not dewy, very much in the middle, it has a primer like quality. So sunscreens, um, so sunscreen lays on top really well and just my, and just makes my skin feel super comfortable throughout the day. It's affordable, it has antioxidants, it has peptides. It's really hard to go wrong with this one and I'm a huge, huge fan. I've already got another tube open. I don't necessarily reach for this every day, but when I'm trying to simplify my, my routine or I can't be bothered, I'll just cleanse, um, use some sort of hydrating serum throw this on and then I'm good so yeah absolutely love this I think they nailed the texture performance formula everything big big fan next is creme dermo purifiant if I've said that right from biologic recherche again as you can see I'm going through a lot of their products because I'm sort of in an exploration of the brand this year now this product I think is very worth the money and if you have congestion any redness coming from congestion or acne just inflammation in the skin this is such a good moisturizer it has an awesome skin calming effect while also being purifying but it's all but it's not drying so this in combination with the one one skin booster was like a match made in heaven and i loved using them together but even just this cream alone as kind of like a serum in cream is an awesome thing to explore and i guess i would suggest if you feel like you've tried everything on the market just help keep your skin feeling clean and clear um if you purchase lotion p50 from biologique and you add the derma purifiant that is going to be an awesome skin routine and I can't imagine it not having an enormous effect on just the clarity, brightness, you know, congestion issues and all of that. Um, this is an awesome product and I love it. <laughs> Next is another product from Maturium, which is their Skin Soothing Recovery Lotion. Um, I think this is a good product and maybe a little bit underrated. I'm not sure if it's been discontinued or what's going on with it, but the reason this was a good moisturizer is because it had a very matte leaning finish and this was sort of targeting like skins that were maybe going through different or again on the other side of some harsher acne treatments because it had a soothing effect, but not, but it wouldn't add too much heaviness to the skin. Um, I'm just not sure the kind of marketing around skin soothing is specifically where this moisturizer should have gone. Because to me, that brings up imagery of like nourishment and that kind of thing. Whereas this is very matte. So I don't know. I'm not sure how they could have maybe presented this product better to the audience to clarify who it's targeting and who it's for but maybe it was lost a little bit in the marketing and the placement in their product range. Um, it's a shame because the formula is great. I'm not sure that the messaging necessarily came through. Next is GoTo Much Plumper Skin, which is a hydrating serum from GoTo. This was really nice, hydrating, plumping, all the things. Um, it just ultimately wasn't really that memorable. Um, I couldn't distinguish it, say, from the ordinary hyaluronic or whatever it is. So I very much like having hydrating serums in my routine. It's just I chop and change them. This is a category that I um, explore a lot because it's low risk. So yeah, this I enjoyed using. If you're a fan of GoTo, you know, it's an easy pickup and it would, I think it would work back really well with their very amazing retinol. It's just as a standalone like product, I don't consider it brilliant. It was just good, enjoyed using it, moving on. Next is the SkinCeuticals Micro Exfoliating Scrub. And I'm actually a big fan of physical exfoliating cleansers. Um, this was quite intense, so it has a lot of particles in the base, but 
Um, I love this product. I think it's one of the best physical scrubs I've ever used because the particles are super fine. So although there are a lot of them and it does feel abrasive, I don't feel like I'm scratching my skin off. Um, and the reason I enjoy having something like this in my routine is just it's the best way to get instant brightness or like an instant lift. So I wouldn't use this often. This tube lasted probably over a year, if not even longer. It's just sometimes when my skin was feeling dull for whatever reason, you know, often when weather related or whatever it is this would be an, like a this would be a true pick me up in a very quick way without risking too much uh, irritation because I think physical scrubs they're in your control so if you apply it gently you'll get a gentle result next up is the Riome um, active recovery broth which I know I always get a hard time about the name of this because everybody feels a bit icky hearing the word broth um, obviously La Mer made it famous with their miracle broth but for some reason it doesn't land in the same way with this brand but I actually think this is a super awesome product you know they packed it and loaded it with just a bunch of hydrators antioxidants like anti-aging ingredients so they really rounded it off really nicely um, I enjoy the scent it's a little bit of a heavy like noticeable scent so if you have a chance to kind of smell it or grab a sample that might be worth doing but I think Found this super hydrating super plumping it kind of takes the place of an essence serum um, and just ticks a lot of boxes so again on the nights when I wanted to speed up my routine a little bit I would love to use this as pretty much a standalone product just put moisturizer on top and that would be it so um, it's a product that kind of competes for attention in that essence category for me so I really love the Gothamista Essence, I love Sulwasu First Care, I love the La Mer, the Treatment Lotion. So I kind of just cycle through those and at some point I will definitely add this back in because it had a really, it had a really nice skin soothing anti-redness effect on my skin. Next is the Lovina Ocean Rituals Exfoliating Cleansing Balm. So this was super unique because it's very bright blue and it's kind of fun to use just to have something that colorful in your skincare routine. Plus I think Lovina is such like a thoughtful skincare brand. Um, I very much enjoyed using this. The, the texture is very indulgent and it feels like super nourishing on the skin. The oil quality or content in here is obviously very high. Um, so I don't think they've skimped out at all and it just feels luxurious and indulgent. It does have a fragrance. It sort of reminds me of berry tea in a way, which I'm not sure is anywhere near an official description, but that's just how it smells to me. Um, and I think this emulsified really well. It rinsed really well. It's just a really good cleansing balm. The only thing is I think it's fairly pricey and the jar is kind of small. So this is probably more for people that do like indie brands that do want indulgent oil rich textures but definitely one to explore if that sounds like your vibe. Next is the Chanel Sublimage like Vanilla Bean ex Face Exfoliator. I really enjoyed the texture of this because it was like jelly and it, it was like applying jelly to the skin and it had these suspended little particles of vanilla beans in there. So it was really fun to use. And I love, love, love the smell of Sublimage. It's one of my favorite just skincare scents on the market overall. The only downside of this product is that unfortunately the particles are quite clingy to the skin so I had a really hard time rinsing them off. I ended up using this product kind of before a shower then rinsing it off in the shower but somehow I would still find little particles in my hairline and that kind of thing so if I think this needs a little bit of editing to the formula just to make those particles a little bit less clingy or I don't know if they need to make them a bit bigger so they rinse off the skin easier or whatever it is it just needs some minor correction for that reason I wouldn't repurchase although I did enjoy using and if they end up coming up with a reformulation I will buy it again next is the Ranavat uh, Jasmine Hydrating Mist another um, floral water so I don't know what it is about me and floral waters clearly I keep buying them which I'll need to stop now. Um, like the others, this was totally fine. I didn't find it particularly hydrating. It was literally just like applying water to the skin. Um, the reason I have a lot of these floral waters is just because I use them to keep hydrating masks, you know, more moist um, so that they don't dry out too quickly. Um, or sometimes when I'd come home from work, I would just like, I would just come into the bathroom, sort of spritz my face um, just to refresh a little bit um, before doing like my full night routine. But I've ended up just preferring a few other mists like Sunday Riley, um, 
like I love the Sunday Riley. I love that Caudalie Great Border. I've got the Lisa Eldridge. There's just a few others in rotation. So these specifically like floral only mists, they just end up not doing very much. The nice thing about this one is that it very truly smells like jasmine. So if you do enjoy the jasmine scent, this had a pleasant aroma. I just don't really think it had a functional benefit. Next is the Dear Lucy Marine Antioxidant Serum. And I had this in my routine for a while. Like I used it consistently for a few months and then just put it down for some reason. And then I recently found it for some reason I thought I'd already emptied it, but I hadn't. The whole purpose of this product is to be like an all-in-one, one-and-done type of serum. It's quite a rich emulsion texture. So it's not watery or like a gel. It is, it leans like a lotion. Um, for that reason, I actually found it a little bit harder to integrate, which doesn't make a lot of sense because most people would appreciate the fact that it is just a one and done product. But I guess I've realized in myself that I just tend to prefer thinner, lighter textures that I can then control the application and layer as I want. So a product like this, that is a bit more of a well-rounded, like ingredient packed type product. I would use it more when I'm simplifying my routine when I'm doing like an express routine but not necessarily something that I'd be able to integrate on a day-to-day -day basis in the long run just because so many of my other products are based around layering and just to repeat myself light layers is just very much my skincare philosophy um, but I think Dear Lucy have done a really nice job designing this product there are so many great ingredients in there that will act as both antioxidant but also targeting uh, pigmentation issues so yeah, I do think if you suffer from pigmentation, whether it be post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or post-inflammatory erythema, this is a great product to explore, especially if your thing is simplifying your own skincare routine. Next is a little mini of the Biologie Recherche Silk Plus, um, which is an interesting product category because it's a serum, but they consider it to be a finishing serum that you apply at the end of your skincare routine. And in some ways, I think it's supposed to act as like a semi-occlusive or like a shield on the skin to protect particles and pollution from like attaching to your skin. So I actually really love using this product and funnily enough this category of skincare overall I feel is quite underrated. Um, I really enjoy using the Dior Dream Skin for a similar purpose. Um, I think the Biologique one is a little bit thinner. It doesn't feel quite as much as a primer. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this product. They kindly gifted me a larger size, so I'll have an opportunity to use it properly. You know, minis are nice to trial, but ultimately they can't give you enough scope as to how a product will work long term. So I don't really have any solid thoughts to give, just that I enjoyed using it enough to move on to a larger size size and I guess I'll update again once I finish the big size once I finish the full size well it's very much a biology kind of empties but the second to last product I've got here is serum biosensible so this is kind of like a rescue serum for them from what I understand you're supposed to use this more periodically when your skin is going through stages of stress they have another serum called erythros I think which is more of like an anti-redness serum and they also have a biosensible emulsion so I've used the biosensible serum I've used serum erythros and I've used biosensible emulsion and of the three biosensible serum probably was the least noticeable had the least noticeable impact on my skin for like soothing this product was really good for dryness dehydration um, that kind of thing but I actually prefer layering serum erythros with biosensible emulsion and those two products together really form a powerhouse product to to really calm my skin down to keep it feeling comfortable and take all like the and all the signs of stress out of it so yeah I think if I was looking to use one of the serums in the future I have already got a backup of Serum Erythros, so I'll probably stick with that. And I think Biosensible is probably going to be more for people that are dealing with like irritation associated with dehydration or maybe even from procedures where it's like a temporary effect that your skin will recover from. And this is acting as a bit of a skin booster. But in terms of actual daily use for skin soothing, if I haven't said this already, I preferred Serum Erythros. I probably should get into the habit of scripting some things because I can tell that I'm going around in circles and I apologize that I'm making you sit through my rambled thoughts. But um, anyway, um, let's move on to the last product. So last product I have in my MTs this round is the Verso Blemish Fix, which I think has been reformulated, not sorry, not reformulated, it's been renamed. 
um, I'll throw up the updated name on screen. And I think this is an awesome product. So it uses a type of retinoid that you can use during the day. So if you have acne prone skin, this is a really nice complement to other acne treatments. Um, but I think they've made a really nice product to help with true clarifying. So it's just another product that I really enjoy to help keep my skin clarified. Some of these products that I've mentioned today that are a little bit more acne focused, I was actually using them during a period when I was having a break off uh, tretinoin. So if you are using more of a prescription acne treatment, then I, I don't think you would need these as well. But if your issues are more mild and you, or you just don't want to go down the road of Tret, um, then I think something like the Verso Blemish Fix, like the One One Skin Booster, those types of products are really great to explore to help manage breakouts when they aren't too severe. And this Verso product in particular was one of the most effective non-prescription products I've ever used. So I highly, highly recommend it. So that's a wrap on this empties. Um, I really feel like I did a bad job of explaining and I think I say that in every video, but please do let me know if you have any questions about any of the products I spoke about. And if you have any of your own thoughts on these products, then I'd love to hear them because just hearing feedback is also part of why I have this channel. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video.